Okay, so let's begin this practice in child's pose. Whatever your favorite variation is, if you happen to be inversion free, then use your props or prop up onto your elbows. And we'll stay here for about three or four breaths. Allow yourself to settle in, focus in on your breath. Let's take one more breath here in child's pose. And then lift the head, look forward to the front of your mat. Open the arms up to about the width of your mat. We're gonna slide forward into Sphinx pose. So any way you see fit to come onto the belly, walk the arms forward. 90 degree angle in the arms and the legs can be as wide as you need them to be so your lower back is happy. Roll the shoulders back, lengthen through the spine. Just keep the chin in check, make sure it's not sticking out in front of you. And just take a few breaths here. Allow the glutes to relax. Start to engage the belly. Nice strong activity in the upper body. Yep. Yeah. From here, let's take some gentle twists. So inhale in your neutral spine and then exhale gently curl around to look at your right heel. Then inhale, come back through center. Exhale, look at your left heel. Let's do that one more time each side, inhaling through center. Exhale, look at the right heel. Inhale through center. Exhale, look at the left heel. Inhale, come back through center. And we're gonna take a quad stretch from here. So exhale where you need, bend up one leg, reach back with the hand, grab the foot or the ankle and gently pull the heel to the sit bone. As you do this, allow that same side hip to press down into the mat. Keep the heart open, keep the shoulders away from the ears. And of course, breathe. Uh, gently release and let's switch to the other side. Reaching back, grab the foot or the ankle, gently pull the heel towards the sit bone. That same side hip presses down and always be mindful of your knee. If it doesn't feel good, then ease up a little bit. Uh, gently release. And let's bring the hands now into an interlaced position. If your shoulders happen to be back a little bit, scoot forward, make sure your shoulders are right over the elbows. We're gonna take a little bit of core work, a little Pilates work here. Bring the legs parallel underneath the hips and the toes stay long. Okay, so take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, engage the belly and lift the hips up. So you're on your knees. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, engage the belly and lift the knees so you're in plank. Stay here for an inhale. Exhale, lower down the knees. Inhale, release the toes. Exhale, gently lower the hips and open the heart. Take a nice inhale here. Exhale, scoop the belly, lift the hips. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, lift the knees to plank. Inhale, stay. Exhale, knees come down. Inhale, release the toes. Exhale, hips come down and lift the chest. Let's go one more round. Take an inhale. Exhale, scoop the belly, lift the hips. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, lift the knees. Inhale, stay. Exhale, lower the knees. Inhale, release the toes. Exhale, release the hips and lift the chest. Take another inhale and as you exhale, scoop the belly and press back to your child's pose. We'll stay here for a few breaths and this can be your favorite version of a child's pose. All right, from here, come back up into tabletop. We're gonna step the right foot forward and come into your low lunge. Shifting the weight so that the knee hovers over the middle of the foot of the toes. And we're going to do a little bit of a flow here. So on your inhale, we want to think upward motion. As you exhale backwards and folding forward into half monkey. Inhaling forward, coming into your low lunge. 
Exhale, press back to half monkey. Now each time we do this, go a little bit deeper. You'll notice the muscles start to open a little bit. Inhale, you can lift the hands to the thigh if you're ready. Exhale, press back. Inhale, coming forward. If you're ready, the arms can sweep up by the ears. We're gonna go one more round. Exhale, press it back to half monkey. Inhale, lifting all the way up. Nice big arch in the back, opening up to the sky or the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the fingertips down to the mat. From here, tuck the back toe and lift the knees so you're in high lunge. Uh, we're going to move up to crescent. If you need to, pop that back foot forward just a little bit. Press through the feet. Inhale, lift up into crescent pose. Exhale, settle into your crescent and stay for another breath. From here, moving forward into warrior three. So shifting that weight forward onto the right leg. Arms can go wherever you'd like them to. You can keep them at your heart, by your sides, out like an airplane, whatever you like. Stay for another breath. From here, engage the belly, start to soften the knees, roll up. We're gonna come into tree pose. So the thigh comes towards the chest. Let your gaze lift upwards, outwardly rotate the left thigh and bring it to where you can balance ankle, calf or above the knee. And for our first couple breaths, just keep the hands in prayer. If this feels good to you, you could stay here or you can put an eagle in your tree. Take the arms and wrap into your eagle pose, right arm underneath the left. Keep the eyes focused on the hands or past the hands as if you're looking through them. Nice steady breath. If you're in eagle arms, gently release them. We're going to bring the right hand to the waist. Left hand is going to help the left thigh to turn inward, parallel. Slide the hand down to the ankle or foot. We'll move into Lord of the Dance. Inner thighs come together, engage that belly even more. Right arm extends out in front of the nose. You can go palm up or down or mudra, whatever you like to do. Mudra is just a nice energy channel for our crown chakra. Press the foot into the hand and move into your Lord of the Dance. One more breath. From here, gently release and move into your Warrior Three. Take your time. Reach the fingertips down towards the mat, soften the right knee and move into your high lunge. Fingertips and back foot gently connect. From here, flat palms, step it back, find plank and move through your vinyasa or down dog or child's pose. Once you move back, you can rest in child's pose or down dog for about three breaths. One more breath here. Lift the eyes. We're gonna step forward with the left foot to come into low lunge, so tabletop, and then step it through. Shift your weight forward. And here we go with our flow. Inhale, lifting up the chest. As you exhale, shift back and fold forward, half monkey. Inhaling, shifting forward to low lunge. Starting to lift to get a nice arch through the back. Exhale, pressing back, opening up the hamstring and the lower back. Inhale, shift forward to low lunge. Maybe the hands come to the thigh this time. Exhale, shift it back, coming into your half monkey. Inhale, shifting forward to low lunge. If you're ready, sweep the arms up by the ears, arching through the back, lifting the chest. Exhale, shift back, find your half monkey. Inhale, shift forward to low lunge. Let the arms sweep up by the ears this time. Nice, big, full body stretch. Exhale, the hands come down to the mat. Tuck the back toe. Lift the knee for high lunge. From here, if you need to, scoot the back toe forward just a touch. Press through those legs. Inhale, lift up into crescent pose. Exhale, settle into crescent, and then stay for one more full breath.
On your next breath, shifting forward into your warrior three. Let the arms sweep down by your sides or come to your heart center. Square off those hips, energize through the floating leg and foot. One more breath. From here, start with the core, pull the belly, start to soften the knees and come up to a vertical position. Outwardly rotate the right leg and find tree, ankle, calf, or inner thigh. Find the balance with the heart, hands in the heart center first. And let the gaze move upward so it's right in front of you, opening up our perception to the world around us. Now from here, let's take the arms into eagle if you choose. If you did it on the first side, do it on the second. This time, the left arm comes underneath. Keep the gaze in the same position. Maybe you're looking through the hands. One more big breath here. If you have an eagle in your tree, Gently release that eagle. Bring the left hand to your waist, right hand to the right thigh. Inwardly rotate so you're in parallel. Slide your hand down to the foot or ankle. We move into Lord of the Dance. Inner thighs pull together, bellies up and in. Left arm sweeps out in front. Press the foot into the hand and move into your Lord of the Dance. Keep that same upward lift as we did in low lunge. One more breath. From here, gently release and move into warrior three. Take your time. Square off the hips if they've opened. Reach the fingertips down towards the mat. Soften your standing knee and gently touch the fingertips and the foot to high lunge. From here, we're gonna step it back, find plank and move through your vinyasa. Pressing back to either down dog or child's pose, and we'll stay for about three or four breaths. One more breath here in your resting position. And then find your way into a seated position with the legs out in front. We're going to move into Janu Shirshasana. So taking the right leg, bringing the bottom of the foot to the inner thigh. We've been here before, but in a standing position. Square off the hips as best you can. Inhale, lift through the torso. Exhale, gently twist to the left and then fold over that straight leg. We're looking for a nice sensation through the lower back, maybe through the hamstring and possibly the hip. Be very mindful here that you're not just collapsing, but you're keeping the torso active as you fold forward. One more breath. On your inhale, lift the head, come up to vertical, exhale where you need to. Let's open the hips. We're gonna take this side variation of Janu Shasana. So the foot's still connected, but you can open up the hips much wider now. Inhale the arms out to your side to a T, and then exhale side bend over that straight leg. Now, this is optional to bring the arm over the head. You can always bring the hand to the leg instead. Keep the chest open, keep lifting it upward. Nice long neck, space between the chin and the chest. One more breath. Good. On your inhale, very gently, slowly come back up to vertical. Exhale where you need to. Bring the right hand about a foot away from your hip. I'm going to slide up to balance on the knee and the bottom foot. Sliding up, your weight is mostly on the knee and the hand. Press the hips forward, nice big full body stretch. You'll get a nice opening through the front of the hip, the belly, the waist. And then gently sit back down and we're gonna take the other side. So letting the legs extend out in front. 
This time the left foot comes to the inner thigh of the opposite leg, sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, micro twist towards that right leg, and then exhale, walk the hands down the leg and fold. Keep that belly engaged up and in. Two more breaths. On your inhale, lift the head, come up to vertical. Exhale where you need to. Open up the hips so we come into our side variation. Inhale the arms out to your side to a T. And then exhale, side bend over to the right. Top arm can go over the head. If that's too much, then bring the hand to the thigh. Keep space between the ear and the neck and the shoulder, and keep lifting the chest up towards the sky. On your inhale, come all the way back up to vertical. Exhale where you need to. Bring the left hand about a foot away from the hip, Press into the hand, lift up onto the knee, and give yourself that nice big stretch through the body. Pressing the hips forward. And gently have a seat. And re-extend the legs out in front. Bring them about hip width apart, and we're going to roll down into our Pashi. So instead of sitting upright and folding from here, we're going to take a slightly different technique. All right, so this will get a nice stretch along the erector spinae. So those are the two muscles that flank along the spine. Sitting up tall, feel those sit bones into the mat, heels pressed down. It's okay if the knees are lifted a little bit. Exhale, roll down, chin to the chest. Keep the sit bones in the pelvis as is and let the rest of the body fold into that so that you're not pressing your weight back. Once you're as far as you can go, you can start to walk the hands forward. And if you have pain in the lower back, and ease up. We're not looking for pain here. A nice stretch through the spinal area is what we're looking for. From here, on your inhale, lengthen through the spine so you're on a diagonal. Now start to fold forward so we get more into the hamstrings. Keep the spine engaged. Belly up and in, away from the thighs. Good. On your inhale, come all the way up to vertical. Exhale, let everything go. We're going to lay on our backs now so you can scoot forward a little bit just to make sure that your head stays on the mat. And gently roll down through the spine. Feet are flat onto the mat. From here, take your right ankle, cross it over the thigh, and then pull up into your reclined pigeon pose. Gently press the right elbow into the right thigh to get a little more opening. Just let yourself relax into the stretch here. Have one more breath. Untangle those legs and let's come into happy baby, holding on to the ankles, the feet, or the toes. Knees come towards the armpits. Let's switch to our other reclined pigeon. So the left ankle will now cross over the right thigh below the knee, or above the knee, that is. <laughs> and then gently pull the legs towards the chest. Left elbow presses the left thigh away. One more breath here in Pigeon. And gently open the legs. Let's take Happy Baby one more time. If you'd like to rock a little bit from side to side, feel free to do that. This gives a little bit more stretch from one side to the other. It also helps to relax the spine and the lower back a little bit. If you are rocking, make sure you get both sides equally and then come back to your stillness. 
Bring the bottoms of the feet together so they're floating. Heels come towards the sit bone for a nice floating bound angle pose. Hands and feet are kind of hanging off of one another. But there's not a lot of energy here. Just letting things relax. And don't worry about what it looks like. Let go of what you think the shape should look like and just allow yourself to feel. Gently release the hands, let the feet come down for a reclined bound angle pose. Now you can keep your hands on the hips, you can bring one hand to the heart, one to the belly, or you can extend them out to your sides, whatever you would like to do here. Let the eyes close and just breathe. Bring your hands now to your outer legs. Use the hands to help close the legs and slide the long into your Shavasana. Legs about mat width apart, let them fall to their natural rotation. Arms to your sides at a comfortable angle, but no higher than the shoulders. Again, the palms flip upward. Keep the eyes closed and settle into your breath as you lie here in stillness. Gradually start to deepen your breath. Find energy in your fingers, toes, wrists, ankles, hands, and feet. Bring the legs together underneath you. Let the arms extend up overhead by your ears and give yourself a nice big full body stretch. 
And then exhale, bring the knees in towards the chest and give a gentle rock from side to side. From here, roll onto your right side into fetal position, using the bottom arm as a pillow for your head. Stay here for a couple breaths. Gently press yourself up to a seated position. Eyes remain closed. And either bring the hands together at your heart center or one hand on your heart and one on your belly. Take this opportunity to check in to see how you feel after this practice. How do you feel physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, and spiritually? And take a few moments now for some gratitude, something you're thankful for in this moment, and a few reasons why. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Namaste.